So what we have now is a method by which we execute the power method in order to find this vector x0. And then once we're done with that, we come back and we say, let's run the power method again, but now let's keep subtracting out the component in the direction of that eigenvector that we just found, thereby forcing it to home in on the next eigenvector. Right? Well, we could do that simultaneously, right? Because, well, let's see what happens, what I mean by that. Okay? We could say, let's pick v0 and v1 to be random vectors. Okay? Then, let's make v0 of length 1 and let's make v1 of length 1 but orthogonal to v0. Okay? And then let's run our power methods where we simply run the power method with v0 and we run this modification of the power method with v1. Except that instead of orthogonalizing to x0, we orthogonalize to the current vector v0, the kth iteration of that, which of course eventually will end up in the direction of x0 and therefore eventually this will have the same net effect as orth making our vector v1 orthogonal to the vector x0. You get my drift? Now let's think about that. What we're saying here is let's take v0 and make it of length 1 and make that the first iteration and then let's take v1 Let's subtract out the component in the direction of v0. And then let's take our first iteration v10 to be v1 divided by the norm of v1. Two norms. Hmm. Where have we seen that before? Well, we saw that in week three. If we said, let's create two mutually orthonormal vectors, v0, 0, and v1, 0. What did we do? We said, compute its QR factorization. And one way to compute its QR factorization is to say, take the first column and make, make it of length 1, then subtract out the component in the direction of that vector from the second vector and normalize it to be 1. The point I'm trying to make is, what we can do here is we can say, create a matrix with two columns v0, v1 that are random vectors, and then create a matrix with first and second column v0, v1 that is equal to the QR factorization of our matrix um, v0, v1 that we started with. Now here I'm ignoring the fact that this also returns R because we're never even going to use that matrix R. But, you know, for maybe for completeness, I should say we get the matrix V0, 0, V1, 0, comma R equal to that because typically our routine for computing the QR factorization of a matrix also returns our matrix R. Then down here, what we could do is say, hmm, let's create temporary vectors v0, v1 by simultaneously multiplying both of these vectors that we're tracking by a. Okay, that's a matrix matrix multiply now. We like matrix matrix multiplies. 
And then we need to make these two vectors mutually orthonormal again. And we can do that by once again saying, let's create a matrix with columns V0, K plus 1, V1, K plus 1. Also returning a matrix R that we're not going to use. That results from computing the QR factorization of these temporary vectors V0, V1. Okay, and what we have now is an algorithm that simultaneously does the power method with a first vector and a power method with a second vector, ensuring that that vector stays orthogonal to the first vector. And this is known as a subspace iteration because you know, the, these two vectors that we're now playing with span a subspace of Rm, if A is m by m. Happens to be that we're just working with two vectors now. It's that simple. Okay. Now, what would we expect? We would expect that the coefficient that tells us every time through the tick this how fast we start homing in or how fast we start wiping out all of the components in the direction of the other eigenvectors, we expect that coefficient to be dominated by or dictated by the ratio of lambda 1 divided by lambda 0 in absolute value, right? And then we expect this one to home in on its eigenvector, the eigenvector x1, wiping out all of the components in the direction of x2, etc. And the coefficient that tells us how fast we converge to that is going to be dictated by the ratio lambda 2 divided by lambda 1.